In the previous two projects, you added motors and then sensors to your robot. In this project, you're going to be adding an artificial neural network to your robot. You're going to implement it in C in the physics engine, similarly to the way you implemented an artificial neural network in Python several projects ago. In this particular ANN, we're going to have four neurons that correspond to the four touch sensors. We'll call these S1, S2, S3, for sensor neurons. And at every time step of the simulation, we're going to set the value of these four neurons to the value of the touch sensors. In this example, you can see that one foot is on the ground and the other three feet are off the ground. So we'll set the first sensor to one and the other three sensors to zero. Remember that our robot has eight motors, so we're going to add eight additional neurons to our neural network. M1 for motor 1, M2 for motor 2, and so on through M8. So our artificial neural network now has 12 neurons, and we're going to connect every sensor to every motor with a synapse. I'll just draw a subset of these. So since we have four sensor neurons and eight motor neurons, you can convince yourself that we'll need a total of 32 synapses. Okay, so at this hypothetical time step, we have uh, one of the touch sensors firing and the other three touch sensors not firing. And depending on the weights or the strengths and the type of connection, remember that a black arrow represents an excitatory connection and a gray arrow represents an inhibitory connection. We're going to compute values for our motor neurons, and these motor neurons are going to take on values between minus one and plus one. And we're then going to take these values, which range between minus one and plus one, and scale them to values in minus 45 to plus 45 degrees. So at every time step, we now have desired angles for each of our eight motors, and we're going to set those eight motors with those desired angles, which is going to cause the robot to move which might cause the values of the sensor neurons to change, which will then, in turn, when we update the neural network, it will also cause the values of the motor neurons to change. Which means now the robot will move in a different way, which will cause it to obtain different sensor values, and so on. And what you'll see when you run this now is that your robot moves in a random fashion because we're using a neural network with random weights, random synaptic weights. But you might see that it's repeating itself. It's repeating a pattern very much like you saw neuron activations repeating over time when you were setting up your ANN in Python.